Now let's get into some real talk. It's time for story time, everyone. Why don't we just dive right on in? Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So for this video, I just wanted to say Happy New Year. It's 2024 now and uh, we're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff on the channel. Uh, I've done this game that I'm very excited to show you guys about. It's called Killer Frequency. Uh, so I'm super excited about that. There's a couple of other games that I'm very excited to try out on the channel. I'm also ready to get back to some of those fun quizzes and some taste tests and reactions as well. But I thought I'd start it off with a story time right now. So during the holidays, I was traveling. I was traveling to see my partner, Sam, who currently lives in Switzerland. And I thought I'd fill you in a bit about the travel experience that I went through, because um, it was quite entertaining, positive and negative. But anyways, so over December period, I flew out there um, from Montreal and uh, landed there in Geneva. I had a connection though in London Heathrow Airport. So um, the flight there was fine, no problems, had no issues whatsoever. And uh, I ended up getting actually bumped up to business class, which was even more of a bonus. And I was flying through British Airways. Um, so while I was visiting Sam during the trip, uh, we went to take a little day trip uh, to go see the Matterhorn. I was very excited to see it, you know, obviously it's inspired Toblerone, there's a Disney ride named after it, so I was super excited to see it and it was a great time and it was a wonderful trip to get there. But uh, basically, uh, there were quite a few trains we had to take connections on and uh, basically we were making our way back and one of the train rides we were going to be taking, we were going to be on the train for like a little over an hour and uh, it's just like a normal train, you know, uh, where you just get on and you find a seat wherever it's available. So. Uh, we know that it's about a busy time because we're at one of like the main hubs and uh, we have to get on a train. The train's already full, like pretty full, and there's a bunch of us getting on. So Sam and I get on and uh, we're going down and you know how trains have like the two seaters facing each other, right? Um, so that's what this train had a lot of. And there was an older woman in one of the sections on her own with three available seats. Sam and I tried to sit there. Unfortunately, the seats were a bit cramped and uh, the two bulky men that we are weren't able to sit down beside each other. So I just told Sam, you stay there, I'll find a better seat somewhere else. So I got up and I went to keep going and the seats just behind him there was a woman, middle-aged woman, I'd say in her late 40s, early 50s or mid 50s. And uh, she was sitting in a four-seater all alone, but she had a, a luggage case, a suitcase, blocking all three other seats. So not letting anyone sit with her. And this was a packed train. And I found that quite rude, um, personally. I thought, you know, it's very rude. You can clearly tell people are trying to find seats. People are cramming in everywhere and you're blocking off a four seater just for yourself. So I thought, well, you know what? You think you're so special and you can do that. So I climbed over the seats, didn't touch her obviously, but I climbed over the two empty seats across from her to sit down. So I sat down. She was in shock as how dare I do something like that. The people around happened to be giving me dirty looks too. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's the one in the wrong here, clearly taking up four seats. So I sit down and I'm pretty sure she stepped on my foot on purpose. But anyways, she ends up picking up her luggage and sitting it on the chair beside her. As she should have in the first place. Slash, there's tons of shelves in the back at the beginning of every train cart. Every train booth has a rack 
for big luggage, but no. Anyways, so um, I'm sitting there and uh, everyone knows that clearly Sam and I came on together. So Sam ends up asking the woman at his seat um, if she'd be willing to switch with me. That way Sam and I could sit together. She didn't seem too keen on it, it seems, but she ended up agreeing and said, and uh, her and I switched. So now I was sitting with Sam and that older woman was sitting with this middle-aged suitcase lady. So um, anyways, train goes along, it stops, that stops. The next stop, that older woman got off right away. So don't know what the big deal was. I mean, obviously Sam and I could have sat separately. It wasn't gonna be that big of a deal, but anyways. So we're sitting there and I'm sitting this way and the woman's back would be to me um, and Sam's back would be to her. Okay, so I'm sitting here, there's seats in front of me, there's Sam, and then there's the four seats there and she has her back to us. So every once in a while she would turn and she would look between the two holes, like the gap in between the two chairs, to stare at me. So I would be having a conversation with Sam and then every time I'd be talking to him and she'd look, I'd just stop and I'd stare right at her. And then she'd look away. And I'm like, okay, again, having a conversation with Sam, she turns, I stop and I stare at her. So I think she finally got the hint and stopped doing it. Anyways, so train's going on for a while, people getting on, getting off, getting on, getting off. So then we make it to our stop, which is another major hub. So a bunch of us are getting off. I noticed that this woman is not. So um, Sam and I get up to go. We're the last ones to like disembark. And you know how it is. Obviously when trains arrive, everyone gets up immediately, even before the train has even made it to the station. They get whiff that we're getting close five minutes to it and everyone's standing lining up already. Anyway, so we were the last two to get off. Uh, in our cart, we'll say. So I'm behind Sam and he's walking and I proceed to walk. And what does this lady decide to do? Sticks her foot out to trip me. Now, I was taken aback by that and I turn and I look at her and she starts mouthing something at me very low. I can't hear what she's saying. And obviously in Switzerland, there's many travelers from all over the world. And Switzerland has like four languages as well. So I have no idea what she's saying. She could be Swiss German, she could be speaking French, Italian, Romanche, or anything else for all I know. So I end up just speaking back to her in English, saying how rude and disrespectful she's being and how childish she's acting things like that she just stares at me and uh i end up saying in german i end up calling her a see you next tuesday in german while i was leaving just in case she spoke german anyway so we get off the train and sam's like what was happening because at first he just heard me speaking in english and he thought maybe i was just saying like oh ridiculous this and that childish for maybe the people that had to rush to get off right um, and then until he heard me say the see you next Tuesday in German, he was like, whoa, something's up. So I ended up telling him what happened. He was not too happy that that person ended up doing that. It was done and over with and life just moved on. But he did say that she more than likely did not speak English or understand German and that more than likely she was French. So that was that. Other than that, trip in Switzerland, fantastic time. Now it's time to get home. So my flight was on Saturday and I was leaving from Geneva airport, landing in Heathrow, then taking a connection to Montreal. And my connection uh, was only an hour layover. So it was super tight, but I did a bunch of research. They said it would be fine. So I'm like, all right, fine. So we pull up to the Geneva airport. It's packed. Sam can't even park the car to like come in with me, nothing. So we have to say our goodbye from the car 
he can't even pull up at like a drop off area. That's how busy it was. So we say our goodbyes. I enter the airport and right there is British Airways packed like swarms of people. So um, I end up getting in line. And now I had booked premium economy um, because I need a bit more leg room and seat room just to feel a bit more comfortable. So um, I just got into the regular line because I couldn't tell the difference. So I'm in line and the line, you know how the line does the zigzag. Well, I guess there were two zigzags going and it looked like one might have been for like the elite British Airway people and the regular British Airway people. So I was in the line of the regular British Airway people. And now part of the zigzag, zigzag, there's where the two lines kind of meet and then continue, right? And there's two uh, employees, British Air employees standing there and they're handing out these like yellow slips. And people are starting to like attach them to bags. So I wanted to know what it was for and if I needed it. So I'm waiting because they're assisting someone from that other line right next to me. And I was gonna ask them what needed to be done. Now, granted, the zigzag line in front of me had a lot of zigzag left. And we'll say three people worth of people had moved ahead. So there was a three person gap in front of me. I'm waiting to speak to the person. What do I get? A tap on the shoulder and uh, are you moving or not? In their lovely little British accent. And I said, yes, I will be moving and continuing. However, they're handing something out and I would like to speak to them. So I will be a moment. Well, they do push me out of the way and they all start piling through. I ignore it. I'm talking to the employee. I find out what it is and I look, I've seen they've all pushed through and I go, wow, that's ridiculous. How inconsiderate. One of the British mothers felt the need to then say, well, pardon my accent, but I feel the need to do it. Well, we have been waiting in the other line and then we were told that was the incorrect line. Um, so now we are in this line and it's been very frustrating. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm very frustrated myself, thank you. And she just kept going, because, oh yeah, I want her line, eh? So anyways, so I end up asking the employee, I'm like, listen, I have premium economy. Am I, like, can I go into that other line, the, like, the fancy line? Yes, you can. There's a line though, obviously, so I would have had to merge, right? And again, the lines are going the same way, the same speed, so it's just, I just merge, right? Well, that was gonna cause chaos, and this man in the line, and the lady, like, that yelled at me, and this and that, I said, well, you know, we've all been waiting in line and are quite frustrated. And the guy that I apparently was gonna cut in front of goes, yeah, we've all been waiting, so why don't you get in the other line? And I go, excuse me? I am part of this line and I will proceed. No, you should go in the other line. It's pretty much what he's saying to me. He doesn't say it that argumentatively. Obviously, I'm, ampl <laughs> I'm amplifying it for dramatic effect. But uh, so I just look at the employee and I'm like, wow, like bad day apparently for everyone. So I just said, listen, are both lines moving at the same speed? Yeah, it looks like it. I'm like, fine go to the other line. It's all good. So now 12 people have gotten in front of me. So I get to death stare these 12 people that have been cutting me off this whole time. So I'm waiting. And who's two people behind me? Jerk. That just told me off. And I'm like, oh, what line are you in now, mister? I didn't say that to him. Anyways. So I'm in line. It's moving. It's moving. Finally get to the counter. And I have two bags I have to check. So I go through the process, no problem, but the woman at the counter goes, the conveyor belt's broken. So you're gonna have to take your two bags to the end of the counters where a colleague of mine will take them and they're loading them off the plane. Yeah, sure, fine. Now I'll preface this now by saying I had bought air tags because I am an iPhone Apple user. So I bought air tags, both bags, especially since I was taking the connection, I wanted to ensure I knew where my bags were. 
So I hand the bags over, I go through security, get to the gate, get on the plane, and my seat is the seat that's all the way at the back of the plane. So anyway, so I get on the plane, and I'm telling the flight attendant that I have a one hour layover, it's very tight, and you know this and that, and they're like, oh, that's unfortunate, this and that, all right, let's see what we can do, blah, 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 great. So we're sitting on the uh, tarmac now, and uh, the runway, and Sure enough, Mr. British pilot gets on and goes, Oh, sorry, everyone. Uh, so there's a bit of a delay with the baggage. So uh, we're just ensuring that all the baggage is put on. I had the decision on whether to leave the baggage and to press on or to wait for it. And I thought that it would be best to wait for the baggage. Now I'm like, of course you would think that. So uh, 20 minutes later, past takeoff, we're now about to leave. Flight attendant comes up to me and says, all right, so we should be landing at this time though. You should be fine. You should be able to make it. I'm like, thank you very much. And I just so happened to look out because I was the last seat all the way at the back of the plane. No one was sitting beside me, so it was great. Flight was fantastic. We land, we're landing and, uh, the crew was very nice enough. There was four of us that had very tight connections. So they ended up getting on and saying, everyone else stay seated. We have four passengers that have very tight connections and we would appreciate if they could make it to the front first to depart. So they're telling me like the seatbelt sign hadn't even got turned off and we're like, uh, what is it? Taxiing to the gate. And the attendants are like, okay, get up, go, go, go to the front, go to the front. So I'm going to the front. It makes it to the gate. All these people start getting up and cutting me off. The attendants were nice enough to say, sit back down. We have people that need to get off right away. So people got out of my way and I'm there with three other people. Now we're just waiting for the door to open. Waiting, waiting, waiting my phone open I see what gate I'm supposed to be at and now as you know or you might not know Heathrow Airport has like five different terminals um, usually international flights land at terminal five and that's where other international flights depart from terminal five so I was landing in the right terminal however there are three different gate sections gate A section, gate B section, gate C section. So I look at the phone and my flight's leaving from gate C whatever. All right. So we get off the plane, the door opens, we're running and we're running and we're running and we're running. Go down the escalator and London Airport wants you to go through security again before you get on your next flight. So there's security at each different gate section, right? So there's gate C security. I go running, door closed with a sign. Gate C security closed, take train to gate B security. So then I have to run to the train, wait for the train with the other three passengers, get on, who's all getting on? All the people from our flight because that's how long it took. We get to gate B, go, mad dash, running, running, running. I'm running like crazy, trying to find where to go. The signage, yeah, the signage is okay, but it wasn't clear enough for me. Running, I see this woman driving by, like, you know, the ones that take you to the gates usually. And I go, like, excuse me, I'm really trying to catch this connecting flight. I really need to get to security quickly, would you be able to take me there? Oh no, I'm sorry, because you have not passed security, I'm not allowed to take you. You have to take the train. This is only for people that have made it past security. I lost it. So I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever. So I end up making it to gate B security. And as they scan my my boarding pass and passport, there's a big X. Sorry, you've missed your flight. Please now go and take the train to gate A to speak to someone to make arrangements to catch another flight. Yeah, fine. 
And sure enough, I was talking to Sam about it and he had been like following the flights and whatever. And I had noticed my connecting flight was leaving 10 minutes early. So they just decided, oh, well, there's someone that's going to not miss, not make the plane. Oh, well, see ya. Typically, that only happens if they want to get ahead of schedule because there might be a storm coming. Sure enough, Montreal, Canada was getting hit with like some heavy snow that evening. So I guess they really wanted to ensure that they make it there safely, which I understand and I get. But I was pissed and I was very emotional and I was very mad. So I march all the way to the gate, to the train, get to gate A, go talk to someone. And who do I see? The three other people that had connections, they all missed them. So we all had to go talk to someone, it looked like. Don't know where they were going. I ended up speaking to one person and her connection was she was going to Washington, D.C., but uh, she missed it. So anyways, so I'm talking to the fine gentleman at British Airways and he looked like a joy. So I get to him and go, yeah, hi, I've missed my connection. Uh, need to find another way to get. All right, boarding pass, looks it up, and he goes, okay, we have another flight tomorrow. And I go, and he just stares at me. And I go, okay, still just stares at me. So I go, well, what accommodations will you be providing me then? Oh, one moment. So then he starts doing that. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? Anyways, so I end up, while he's doing that, I go, what time is the flight at? It was the exact same flight that I was supposed to take today that I missed. And he goes, uh, gives me the time, and I go, okay. Now, I was going to be lucky enough, if I hadn't made the flight, I was getting bumped up to business class again. But because I've missed the flight, and the only available seat is in premium economy, I was gonna go back to premium economy for the next day's flight, which whatever, that's what I paid for, fine. So I said, well, are there any earlier flights to Montreal? And he goes, well, there is one, but it goes to Amsterdam first. So I said, so it's a connecting flight, right? Yes, I said, not gonna take that, we see what connections can do to you. So then I go, nothing else? And he goes, let me look. And he goes, well, there is an Air Canada flight that arrives two hours earlier. So I go, okay, well, can I take that? Well, it's full. Okay, well then, can you put me to like a wait list or like standby? No, because we're British Airways and we can't do that on Air Canada flights. Then why the F are you telling me? So I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. So he's doing his stuff, whatever. So then he grabs this like packet and it has uh, like a white t-shirt, toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, like like shower gel, stuff like that. So he goes, here you go for overnight. He goes, here's your receipt. We've booked you at this hotel. Uh, Meal vouchers are included for dinner tonight, breakfast tomorrow, because it was like, I don't know, like five o'clock when I had landed. And I'm like, okay, five o'clock? No, it was four something, actually. That's a lie. Land at 4.30 or 4.40. So I'm like, okay. He goes, and here's two vouchers for you to take the bus to the hotel. Now this is a bus that's internal with the airport at least. And it it's one of those like hotel hopper buses that picks you up and takes you to the different, it goes the route of the hotels and back to the airport. I'm like, yep, yeah, fine. So he gives me that. He's like, all right, go on your merry way. So I'm like, yeah, great, thanks. So I go, I go to leave. Well, now I have to pass through customs. So, They have this one where you can like scan your passport and they'll let you through. So I try to do that. Doesn't work, of course. So I have to wait in line to be processed by a person. So I'm waiting in line and I'm in the single people flying line, right? So I'm there, there's people in front of me. 
And there's only one border agent handling the single flyers. Yet there's three border agents handling families. So families are walking right up, going right to those people. And we're stuck in this line because this man, for us, has been dealing with this one person for so long. So finally, one of the employees is like, Oh, uh, family border people, can you not just take these people right now? They've been waiting forever. And they're like, Duh, uh, okay. So, brings us over. And he says, okay, so line up here. I was the next line at this point. And of course, Mr. Border Agent that needs to exercise his power goes, stand back, please. And I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. Even though it's like, dude literally told me to stand here. Also, you want me to just back up like an inch. Whatever, sir. It'll make you feel all big and powerful. So I'm next. I go up and he goes, purpose of visit. And I go, I don't want to be here. I missed my connection and I have my next flight tomorrow. So I need to stay here tonight. All right, let me look at everything. All right, fine. Uh, this is the bus we need to take. He was fine, like he was nice, but I was over it. So, okay. So now I get out of the airport. I have to walk through the parking garage to the bus area because there's like 20 different bus stops. My bus stop happened to be number 17 slash 18. So I had to like go far enough. I get there. And this stop happens to be for all the hotel hop bong hop offs. So there are seven different trains, trains, seven different buses that arrive because certain buses go to certain hotels. Okay. And looking at the schedule, they rotate and they show up a bus every 50 minutes. Right? Okay. So I had missed the bus that I was supposed to be on apparently according to the schedule by two minutes. Yeah, fine. Let's just say 45 minutes later, the bus shows up and the other buses have already showed up twice. So get on the bus. Stops at the other hotel first. There's a bunch of us on the hotel, on the bus and he asked which hotel we all need to and if anyone needed to stop at the other hotel and none of us had to but he ends up stopping at the hotel anyways maybe if someone needed to get on it I don't know whatever so then we get to our hotel so then we all pile off and now wait in line to check in so I check in all right here you go here's your room here are your meal vouchers uh, dinners between six and ten over there. Right. Fine. So I get upstairs and I head right down because it's like 6.05 and I want to get there earlier than later because I want to beat the rush of people, right? So I get there. There's some people already eating. So take my voucher and I'm like, oh, I wonder what this is going to be like. Well, I guess this hotel is the hotel for missed flights. So it's set up buffet style and I had my choice of Peas and carrots, white rice, butter chicken, another Indian dish, uh, chicken like legs, like, you know, the full chicken leg, and uh, mushroom pasta salad. All right, and then a dinner roll or nan bread. So I grab my meal, and for beverages, it's tiny glasses, and you can choose water, or apple juice. So, okay, had my one glass of water and had some apple juice, had my dinner. Oh, and I ended up getting saffron, uh, saffron carrot soup. Okay, so have that. For dessert, they had uh, raspberry cheesecake. So I had a small slice, it was good. And then grabbed an apple for the road because that was the only other things they had were apples and oranges. Grab the apple for the room, get upstairs, whatever. I end up Uber eating um, some beverages and some snacks because that wasn't going to tide me over. Um, and uh, spend the night. It's fine. Wake up the next morning, go down to breakfast. And breakfast is box cereal of bran flakes or I believe sugar-free 
cornflakes and small croissants in uh, prepackaged little bags or muesli this like oatmeal like I don't know what it is gruel type thing I don't know what it is I'm sure it's delicious it didn't look appetizing and then to drink was water or a juice box of apple orange juice. So I had my croissant and my orange juice. Checkout was at 11 and my flight didn't leave till 4.30. So we'll check out at 11, wait for the bus. The bus arrives at 11.25, whatever. We'll get on the bus, get to the airport, it's 11.50 go through security, and now I get to wait. Now granted, Heathrow is quite a big airport, so there's quite a bit there to like check out, but when you're not wanting to be there, you're not really in the mood. Also, a lot of the shops are like Dior and like Swarovski and, uh, you know, Louis Vuitton and Gucci, and it's like, I'm not buying stuff from there. So uh, I end up buying a couple of souvenirs from a London shop as they like to call it and then I go to Starbucks they had a small Starbucks at the airport so I get a, get Starbucks and I sit at the Starbucks which is packed full of people um, and I wanted something sugary and sweet so I wanted a frappuccino but the Starbucks only served hot or cold tea or coffee with clotted cream would you like clotted cream so I ended up getting a chai, <laughs> a chai latte, um, and a almond cookie biscotti, um, which was bland and gross. Anyways, so I sit there for like over an hour, and my butt's starting to hurt because one of the chairs that I had, because there was very little seating, um, was just a stool that had no back. So. Uh, you know, that's fun, crunched over a table. So then I get up, walk down a bit, and I sit at, um, you know, just like uh, where you would wait at a gate, like those plastic chairs that are all linked together front and back. So I just sit there in like one of the waiting areas. So I'm waiting and I'm sitting there and then this family decides to show up and it's a man with his two kids. So the man sits on the opposite side with his older kid and his younger kid, who's probably like six, um, is sitting beside me. And this kid is not having it. Kicking off his shoes and he's kicking the seats. And you know, seats that are attached rumble. So I'm constantly getting this beautiful plastic chair massage from this child that's kicking. While the father's too busy on a cell phone to pay attention to his own children. So I end up getting up and leaving talking to Sam on the phone and uh, so after my chat I go to the bathroom and I find an airport like restaurant so I order lunch because I should eat something before I get on this plane and the flight won't tell you what gate you're at until 50 minutes before your departure so 4 30 so I wasn't gonna find out until 3 40. Actually, it was a little earlier. I will give them that for this flight, but it looked like it was either an hour or an hour and 10 or 50 minutes before the departure. So I wait, I'm eating at the restaurant because I'm going to stay there until the gate appears because I'm not wanting to find somewhere else to sit. So it's time the gate has appeared. And by the way, I'm in the gate A area because that's where the shops are mostly. Great. So I'm in gate B something. So I go to the train area again. Now, because it's busier in the day, there's quite a lot of people waiting. And obviously the way this train is set up is there's glass partitions where the doors will open. So there's crowds of people waiting at these entrances to get on the train. So I get to one further in and I'm behind the group because that's how you should do it. And uh, we're waiting for some time, and then, oh, it's announced. The train will arrive in one minute. Who shows up? That family, with now the mother as well. And what do they decide to do? 
come around and start trying to cut off all of us to get on the train for us. And I'm not having it. So, the person in front of me is trying to block them off. I'm trying to block them off. The train arrives, the door opens. The woman gets ahead of them. And the mother and her kids and her husband cut right in front of me. So they're in front of me. I'm trying to get on. Everyone's trying to get on, like pushing almost, but not. And the woman in front of the woman that cut me off, the family that cut me off, looks to the mother and goes, you're, you're pushing me. And she goes, well, I'm being pushed. And she looks at me. And I look at her and I go, I am not pushing you. And we've all been waiting. And you just showed up and you're deciding to cut in line. So stop it. You're the ones in the wrong right now. She gives me this dirty look. And I go, you can wait your turn. We're all going to get on the same train. So pushing, pushing. She's giving me these dirty looks. So we're about to get on the train. And she's like still cutting me off and everything. And like pushing through with her husband and her two kids. It wasn't like they were rushing for a flight. And I end up turning to her and I say, wow, you're giving a wonderful example for your children to learn from. Unbelievable. And I walk away on the train. So make it to gate B, get off, get to my gate, and uh, now to wait. So waiting, waiting, waiting. You know how it is at airports if you've ever flown. People love hanging out by uh, the entrance to where you're going to go for the plane. They love hanging out, even if they're like in group 20, they'll be there at group one calling and they love blocking it. Anyways, so my group gets called. I was group uh, three or four. I can't, no, I was group three. So I go, I have to push through all these people that haven't been called on yet to get in line. And I get through and I get on the plane and I sit down. Great. So I'm just waiting for my flight partner, we'll say. And it's a two-seater. So I had the window seat. This person would have had the aisle seat. Then it goes four seats and then two other seats on the other side. So I'm waiting. Sure enough, he shows up. He's trying to stuff his bags in the overhead and it doesn't fit because he's brought two large suitcases, whatever. And then he sits down and whatever. And he's fidgeting and he's fidgeting. And he's like, we're, we're starting to like leave now. And he's still fidgeting and it's hitting me and I'm getting frustrated. I'm not saying anything. And he's one of these. So the windows are here to me. And he keeps hitting me while he's doing this. Um, but anyways, don't say anything. So we're in the air. What does he feel the need to do? Takes his shoes off and leaves them right in front of him. Puts up his foot rests, slinks all the way back in his chair almost on the other woman's lap and uh, he's watching his movie and because we're the first two seats in the premium area there's a wall in front of us sticks his two bare feet socked feet up on the wall and I'm like great it's gonna be lovely so at one point he gets up to go to the bathroom and I'm like well I'll get up at this time to go to the bathroom too I think that makes sense it's the proper thing to do it's courtesy so that he doesn't sit back down and I say move so I get up, I go to the bathroom, but I forgot to say he went to the bathroom while barefoot. So I had to climb over his footrest and his shoes to get to the bathroom. I make it back before him. I sit back down, I'm all settled. He gets back, he's hitting me, whatever. So we land now and uh, we're taxiing and uh, every five seconds, And I guess he was traveling with his son, who was like a 20-something-year-old, like who's sitting like a few seats back. So he's just hitting me constantly, and I'm having it. I'm like, I'm done. Don't say anything, though. Anyways, seatbelt sign comes off. We get up. He gets up grabs his bags. There's tons of space for him in front of him to move forward. He chooses not to move forward. He chooses to stay there and block it so that I can't get out of my seat. Finally, he moves forward. And I'm talking like 10 minutes of not moving, it felt like. 
And just so I get, I squeeze through, I grab my stuff. And now we're standing in line, waiting to get off, right? And uh, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. We've landed at 6.30 at night, by the way. And this is Sunday now, because I was originally supposed to land in Montreal on Saturday. So this is Sunday. And he's standing there with his coat. And it's one of those vinyl coats that does like the friction, like the swish swish all the time when you move, which is annoying, but it's a coat. What does he do? Has to look through all the windows to see what's happening. So he's hitting me. So I end up saying under my breath, if you hit me one more time, so help me. He must have heard me because he stopped. <laughs> Anyways. So um, we're waiting, we're waiting. Pilot gets on. He's like, well, they don't have a gate for us. So we have to wait. Wait, wait, wait. All right. They're going to bring out the stairs and the shuttle to shuttle us to the terminal. But they have to wait because the blocks have to come to study the plane. So, oh, they got the blocks. Excuse me. And now we have to wait for the stairs and the shuttle. Finally bring it. So people are starting to get on that bus, whatever. And this bus is like, it's almost like it's two buses that are attached. So there's tons of seats and uh, standing room in the middle. So I'm about to get on. The person that's laying people on puts his hand in front of me and goes just a minute. So I'm like, great, I'm not making it on. So he looks. You know how people love to get off of things right away. Well, everyone's crowding right at the front. There's tons of space. So he's having to tell them to move back. And only some people are moving back. No one else is moving back. So finally lets me on. I have to push through crowds of people to go to the back, which by the way, has tons of empty seats. So I sit at the back. And I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever. And because it's winter and it's snow outside, they have the heat blasting on full blast and we're all in our coats and stuff and it's a big enough busy bus so that was fun anyways finally make it to the terminal and now it's time to go through security i make it through security no problem now i have to go get my two checked bags now i want to preface this with when i was on my first flight from geneva to london they told me that because it was going to be a tight connection, they were going to decide whether or not to bring it on the plane or send it another way uh, to guarantee, you know, because it would be too hard to try and rush it off the plane to get on the other plane. So they were going to find another way to make it get to the destination. It's like, yeah, fine, whatever. So, and then when I had missed my connection, I spoke to the man at the counter. He said, do you want to collect your check bags now or just have us like put them on the plane? tomorrow and I'm like put them on the plane tomorrow because I don't know where these checked bags are because they're probably not from this flight and I don't want to have to wait around for ever so anyways so I make it to the luggage carousel and this luggage carousel at Montreal has decided to add three flights that have landed all the same carousel one from Amsterdam ours from London and one from Casablanca so it's packed because we're the last flight to have arrived and it's packed and it's crowded and I can't see a darn thing. I'm having to stand far behind and try and look through people at the luggage coming to. And I had a feeling only one bag made it because according to my tracker, only one showed that it was in Montreal. The other one still showed that it was in Geneva. So I was like, I probably only have one bag, but we'll see. So. 25 minutes later, waiting at the carousel. Finally get my bag. Have to go to baggage claim for the other one. I was on their list, so they knew that my bag was missing. I had to fill out the form, go to the exit where the final check with security is. They had to stamp it, run all the way back to baggage claim, give her the form to just go all the way back to the exit to finally leave. So I get out of the like the back end of the airport my parents are waiting to pick me up so we get into the car so i landed at 6 30 i didn't get in that car till 8 30. i had work the next day and i'm in montreal and it's at least a two-hour drive to ottawa 
So we're in the car. I hadn't eaten or gone to the bathroom in quite some time. So I really had to go and I was very thirsty. And now that I'm back in Canada, I thought, why not a better place than to stop at a Tim Hortons? So we're on the highway. We get off at one that has a Tim Hortons. It's closed. All right, fine. Get back on the highway. We keep going. Get off at two exits past that one where there's another Tim Hortons. It's closed. Get back on the highway. And granted, I have to go to the bathroom pretty badly. So um, I Google and I'm like, okay, let's wait and get off at Castleman. Castleman's a bit bigger than the smaller ones that we might have gotten off on. And it's 10 o'clock now. And it looks like the Tim Hortons is open till 11. Great. So we get off at Castleman. We go to the Tim Hortons. Well, I guess because it had been snowing, they decide to close early. So it was closed. So we drove to the McDonald's that was on the other side of the road. And I went to the bathroom, purchased a beverage and some fries and uh, drove home because I was done. And uh, then I get home. So I get to my place. It's now 11.15 at night and I work at 7.30 the next day. So I just push my bags aside and uh, lie in bed, wake up the next day. So that was my traveling story. Uh, as of right now, it looks like the bag that was in Geneva has made its way to Montreal Airport and will now be coming my way shortly. And uh, yeah, so some takeaways. Number one, tight connections are not good. Number two, try to fly direct or nonstop whenever possible. Number three, British people seem to be extremely rude and think that they're better than everyone else. Thirdly, uh, was that thirdly now? Yeah. Um, the two airports that were the worst were Geneva for the delays and baggage and Montreal for the delays at landing. So needless to say, the trip was wonderful. The end results of flying back were not but I was happy to be home, back in Canada, back in North America, and yeah. So that was my trip experience. Let me know down below if you've had any horror nightmares while flying. Be very curious to hear about them. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy New Year if you're watching this in 2024. And until next time, don't forget to give this video a like comment down below and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!